there's this one video where the actor is going around a corner and he is faded out before making it completely out of the viewer's sight. Let's not forget space bubbles. Dave Williams about to move out of the Quest airlock. Uh, those particles that you see emanating from uh, the airlock is uh, said by the EVA officer, Paul Baim, in Mission Control to be uh, particles of water from the crew's uh, sublevators on their spacesuits. So um, many times during um, spacewalks outside the International Space Station, we can see air bubbles rising up. Can you touch on how there are air bubbles in space? Um, air, can you be more specific, air bubbles? So yeah, like a lot of times during the footage, the NASA footage, you can see bubbles coming up out of the helmets or kind of from underneath you. Um, how do you explain bubbles in space? Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Oh, and it just happens that actors train in an underwater tank. NASA tells us that the Earth is photoshopped because it has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit Command-Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. Some NASA actors say that you can totally see stars when you're in space. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. It's it's not which a is black a cool thing. void. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah. I just wanted the Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one and a small try. one, right? Yeah. And, and then you can see uh, the zodiacal light. Whoa. But the NASA actors from 1969 say that you can't see the stars in space. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Perla what uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. You can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. I don't remember seeing any. NASA says that we can't leave low Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. 
And this is really the beginning, I think, of human beings leaving low Earth orbit. Well, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. Well, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. NASA tells us that they lost the 1960s technology that took us to the moon. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and it's a painful process to build it back again. Uh, the ultimate destination is Mars. See, if you gave me all the money in the federal budget today, I could not get a human to Mars. I think that what you're doing is taking a shot in the dark. You have no way of knowing if any commercial entity will ever be able to put a man in orbit, no matter how much money you throw at them. What you're doing is you're taking NASA's manned space program and making it a faith-based initiative. I yield the rest of my time. NASA also says that they lost the telemetry data for the moon missions. I haven't uh, seen anything that indicates the telemetry data is even in existence, and as I said, even if we had it, we don't have the machines to play it back. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really give you much of a clue as to, as to where this data ended up and whether it, it still exists or not.